side, left side. What do you? Which is the favorite side? I know this is really? my favorite side too. Okay, so you want but I'll switch you for want... you. Oh well, thanks, man. Okay, that's here. really nice. Okay, you gotta come here now. Yeah, I gotta come here. Yeah, let's do okay, it. Let's go. All right, let's do all right. It. Okay. Yeah. All, all right. right. All right, we did it. We're all right, good. we're okay. good. All right, man. So yeah, so we're here with Michael Rooker at Fan Expo. I gotta say it's great to to finally get to talk with you, sir. I have one very important question, and that is, um, in the history of your career, you've played a lot of pricks. You played a lot of you know mean guys. But it seems like over the past like decade, you kind of play these mean guys with almost like a heart of gold. Like there's a balance of humanity amongst these guys that sometimes can you know like jerk people's chains. Is that like a balance that you strive for with your characters? I, I, I kind of like that. I, I think the audiences, uh, the fans like that as well. I, I, you know, I've always wanted to play these roles not bad, not good. Even you know, even the. Baddest of the bad, my first movie, Henry Portsmouth, serial killer, or uh, Frank Bailey and and uh, and Mississippi Burning. These are really bad, bad guys. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, there's no there's no gray area in there at all. But even with those roles, if you look, you have to look really hard. Yeah. You you're gonna see uh, something other than just you know psycho killer guy. Right, right, okay? right. Okay, and so I've always strived for that. Yeah. And so it's just gotten, the roles and the writing has just got, they've just gotten better over the years. Right. And so now I'm able to do it in a really cool kind of entertaining way because I think the writing, quite frankly, the, the writing's gotten better and I've gotten better at rewriting the writing. Right, right, right. So. Exactly. <laughs> and like, you know, now you get to, you know, save a small boy from uh, other Ravengers because they wanted a taste of Terran. That's right. Oh, yeah, that's right. Exactly. And we were just talking about that earlier, too. And it's like... You know, everyone was questioning, well, why does he, you know, when we were rehearsing the project, why does he take him? Why does he keep him? And, you know, and it comes out, we write, Gunn writes it, and it's basically the kid's got balls. Yeah. Kid's tough. Reminds, I think he reminds Yandu of Yandu. Right. You know, he's a tough alien earthling, you know, yeah, Terran. Yeah. He's the, and, and he doesn't see a lot of them. You know, a lot of them are kind of like, oh, whippy, screamy. Oh, no. Yeah. Aliens, they've gotten me. They suck me up in their ship. Oh, no. What are they going to do? And so we end up beating them. Fantastic. <laughs> but, not, right but not this one. Not this one. No. Oh, no, no. He's a, he's a, he's a tough he a cookie. a fighter, yeah. Yeah, fighter. And that's, uh, that, that turned him on. He was like, oh, man, I like this kid. Yeah, exactly. Well, it was uh, it was great talking with you, sir. I got to say, my favorite villain that you've ever played, though, is Mr. Svenning from Mallrats. Mr. Svenning's not a villain. Okay, you try, say so. Look, he's trying to find his daughter the perfect husband. Right. Somebody that will actually listen to him. So that's his idea of a perfect husband. So, right. Or boyfriend, whatever. Oh, perfect. Well, thank you very much for all the great roles, sir. Right on. And if we could just get a quick promo. No chocolate-covered pretzel trick. No, no chocolate-covered pretzel. I, I don't stink palm. <laughs> I don't stink palm, sir.